Ladies and gentlemen, so glad to be back with you once again. It has been a while. Uh, it has been a, a heck of a couple of weeks for me. Um, last video I really posted was my retrospective on the last year of, uh, of trying with a modicum of effort to post regularly. I did not abandon it uh, necessarily because the experiment was over. It was really more of a matter of uh, uh, catastrophic hardware failure that kept me away from you for so long. And so today we are back, finally. Um, also busy with work, obviously. Uh, and uh, it is advising season, and uh, so in between advising sessions, I uh, will be playing a, a little bit of a game here. This is Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1, released November 15th, 2021, developed and published by Frogwares. Um, who publishes apparently a series of Sherlock Holmes games. So I figured I would start with this one and then you know, see maybe if I'll try the other ones as well. Um, all right, so I have uh, previously attempted to play this, uh, but due to the aforementioned hardware failure, it was impossible. And so other than the opening cutscene, I've seen nothing of it. So uh, yes, let's do... So on, um, nope, we're already into it, okay. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Travelling all this way, enduring this... Indignity simply to visit a grave, even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And, if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Okay, so here we are in the game proper then. Something that seems of an interesting, slightly different take on the character of Sherlock Holmes. Um, got quite an interesting outfit he's got here. Sort of a steampunk Victorian aesthetic. Strange chain and a bag or a. a bag that's somehow attached to the belt rather than the crossbody sash here. He's, he's covered in he's got something around his wrist, he's got one sleeve rolled up, he's got his tails tucked up, chains everywhere, things hanging off in other place. It's very interesting. Also notice that uh, the character of John Watson, rather than being a sophisticated doctor and level head counterpart to uh, Sherlock Holmes in the I think it's 
Okay. Sherlock, don't get lost in this huge garden. Follow the sound of my voice. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. We just need your signature. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? <clears throat> there you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I I think we'll stick together. Always Very good. Key. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. Okay, then. Okay, this is just uh, weird. I, I didn't uh, expect... This to be young steampunk Sherlock Holmes. Unexpected. Makes me wonder. This is indeed a detective game. This game is tagged as detective, open world, story, rich and mystery. This is interesting. So John uh, did mention ginger as a sort of sea sickness. This tradition is supposed to be. Uh, ginger is a game's afoot. First mystery. Point of them uh, so the carpet doesn't come to some kind of tripping hazard. There is a name for them, I don't know what it is, but look at how big they are. Like, they're like big three quarter inch copper pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, which itself would present some kind of mm -hmm. a tripping hazard. And that is the dulcet tone of a. Uh, 223. Oh, right, 221, of course, because the number is so very significant. And everything related to Sherlock Holmes in terms of. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Well, I just said Marlin ceviche. Let's check what they have on offer. I just said Marlin ceviche, which I am not eating. I like how John keeps telling me to go places but not following me and I'm just kind of teleporting behind me. Yeah, do you see how uh, much of a tripping hands are this would present with these gigantic uh, posters? I can't. Uh, the Marlin Ceviche? Isn't it? Hey, Sherry! Just our luck. Teleported behind me again. I'm just sighing that wasn't there. A medium, John. Haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galici is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me? Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir... It's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth... Like beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. 
<clears throat> Come now, Sherry. What did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. Okay. Uh, yeah, gotta say, uh, this view was short up there, but, uh, he does look at the character. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. I know, I do remember Sherlock Holmes and some of the actual novels uh, being quite appreciative of art at times. <sighs> but, you know, most interpretations of uh, Sherlock Holmes are based on modern conceptions of intelligence and deduction and crime solving and investigation. Things that uh, during the time they were written were scarcely a concept. Oh, John. How do you have table for us? I'm not sure. Feel like this is not the direction should be going. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can run. Sherry, I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? Okay. What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, uh, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Really? Okay, fine. Right. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Stubborn, yeah, Sherry. Too to do, huh? stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. It would at least be fun Let me take a else. look. Okay. Let's take a look at the king. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you going to find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Pin the evidence. Um, um, but, uh, concentration mode, tracking certain points of interest appear. Uh, okay. All right, so we've got a case. Oh, this is the book. Um, cases. Oh, the lost cane. Cane is made of ebony wood, oddly detailed carving of a bowl of garlic, most likely the coat of arms. This hand grip is made of a gold Javanese statue in the Wayang style, like he stole from the temple. Uh, so they swung it for breaking a bone. Indeed, the cudgel bears signs of numerous hits. Show the owner took little care of it in some. Um, yep. Um, so how do I pin evidence? Okay, pin evidence. It's pinned. All right. Okay. 
I guess that's what I need to do. All right, well, uh, first place to look would be this dude over here with a good view of that table, but actually, I'm going to have to do first, so I'll be right back with you. Okay, we are again between meetings. Let's get back to it. Oops, I turned up my volume in order to understand the student. Okay. You there. Um... Pardon, monsieur, but I am not in the mood to talk. Okay, well, that's understandable, but, um... This is, uh... I'm sorry, sir, I'm a little distracted by the fact that you seem to have a vaporizer on the table here. Is that perfume, or is this some kind of absinthe rinse, or what? Uh, the cane is the accessory version. I'm trying to figure out where I was. Um, what about you guys? You, you're facing that direction. Can you satisfy my curiosity? That's a question I can answer. There were three people at the table, a couple and a retired Navy officer. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have to go find him. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. <laughs> and would you be confident enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. Okay. Uh, front garden, it says. Just Q to concentrate. Oh, neat. It's a nice mechanic. Does this work for everybody? Curd accountant. I will make it. Italian lawyer. Do you scale the fish recently? Well, that's very interesting. Front garden. I assume front garden is where I began. I see nobody in a naval uniform. Perhaps they are incognito. Italian singer. Cordonian aristocrat. Apparently women are persona. There we go. Scottish judge, coffee addict. German physician, uncomfortable shoes. Scottish aristocrat. Welsh engineer. Retired military, Welsh judge, retired military officer. Locate the former Navy officer. Does that mean you? Can I ask you a question? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. Huh. Uh, the Navy officer, Mr. Rhodes, was sitting at our table with the noble couple. The men talked about yachting. And the lady was fidgeting with the cane. Perhaps she put it aside and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. Hey, Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? I'm just begin. going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. Uh, I have to locate the... Okay, I can give the cane back to its owner. Okay, seance room. There's a... I just noticed there's a uh, compass that appeared at the top. Not sure why I would need that, but alright. Perhaps it will reveal itself in time. John, you are just... Uh, it's uncanny the way you move. You just teleport. You just teleport wherever you want to be. It's, it's astounding. You've done it again. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Okay. Hey boy! That's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered troop any these days. What a gentleman. 
But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? Rich and fashionable. Oh, um... Doesn't wear a wedding ring. I'm not sure how to... Oh, there we go. Okay. Um... Uh, judging by the heraldic element, uh, uh, I can be fairly certain that Lord Craven, okay, Craven was one of the names that he mentioned to Noble in the visiting resorts to receive treatment for his liver malady. His floor face indicates that he has come to the temptation to drink a few shots of alcohol, perhaps he was unsettled by the seance. By his red knuckles, I presume that he takes boxing lessons to strengthen his physical condition. Uh, he is now infuriated by the theft of a diamond, unsurprisingly. Okay. Uh, Lord, okay, so Lord Craven. Lord Craven is he has problems with alcohol. He is physically strong and healthy, but infused and be wretched. He has issued his temper. His red knuckles reveal he has severely beaten at least one person quite recently. Okay. Um... Rich and fashionable. Recently hit someone in the face. Swollen reddish skin. Doesn't wear a wedding ring. But they did say that it was a couple there along with the retired naval officer. So he is married. Is there another option? No. So either he's ill or he's just a drunk. <laughs> Let's see. I don't really have any evidence that he's ill. I'm gonna go with Ford. Get to hold it down. Judging by the Herald of Gemma, he's in a recruiting aboard rich English travels around Europe, squandering his money. His florid face indicates that he has problems with alcohol. He is still physically strong and healthy, but in a few years time... Oh, wait, hold on a moment. The, the diamond. Forgot about the diamond. That's probably important Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr. Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. Is Where is it hidden? Fine! Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened at the seance? You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. 
Indeed, perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. Okay. Then what about the diamond? How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Okay. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping okay, a close eye on, on this Sherlock thief. Holmes. Tie chain. Not, not even a pocket watch chain, because there's no watch attached to it. Some kind of lapel chain, some kind of belt chain. Just chains all over Sherlock Holmes. Press Z to highlight interactive areas and the environment around you, okay? People. Seance table. Something in the corner. Okay. Uh, let's start with John. Oh, I love the ambiance. Nice and creepy. Alright. Seems to be some fluorescent material here on the table and floor, and also some kind of white... God, I hope it's paint. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details for some food. Okay. Oval groove. The diamond was placed on the table so Correct. that all participants could reach it. 3 inches in diameter. Half a glass of Balblair scotch and the remains of a poor Laranaga cigar. What else does a gentleman need? There are light traces of rouge on the edge of this wine glass. So that was hers. This must be the ectoplasm. Too bad there's not enough for a proper chemical analysis. Not enough, are ectoplasm. you insane? The ghost was here, Sherry! That's plenty. <laughs> Butterfly. This brooch is old and cheap, but the moth design has its charm. It is not a moth design. It is a butterfly. Mind palace clue. What does that mean? Uh, mind palace. Ghosts of the past. Another okay. Lady Craven faced the window. Yes, we already figured that out. Enter to the courtyard. Luca owns a pin in the shape of a moth. So yes, she was here facing the window. He, where's his chair? Where's Lord Craven's chair? Is he just fucking standing here? It's not broken. It's not kicked or moved around. Courtyard. I guess I saw something over. Oh, there's the chair. This hefty chair has nearly broken after hitting the wall. Could one man even lift it? Nearly. At Cambridge, I was captain of the rugby team. It was no place for weaklings. I wouldn't say that's nearly broken. I'd say that's extremely broken. Can you do anything with my. After colliding with the wall, this chair is all but in pieces. Ethiopian medium, disoriented and friendly. Turkish servant, accommodating friendly. British aristocrat, affable, in high... I don't know that word. Dudgeon? I don't know what that word is. British aristocrat, barely conscious. Sympathetic, barely conscious, my ass. She's faking it. What does it say about John? Nothing? Can't use your superpowers on him, apparently. Okay. 
Thank you for helping us resolve the situation, sir. <laughs> what happened here? I don't know. The ghost. I summoned it as usual, but then it all went wrong. The lady screamed and pointed at Lord Craven. And there was a shadow. Such a mystical force. It terrified the lady. And it must have taken the diamond. Who else could have? Oh, really? Why is one of the responses in yellow? Does the yellow response signify the end of the dialogue? Like I'm just cutting him off? Uh, okay. Do you feel the presence of any supernatural entities at the moment? Are you joking, sir? My nose is broken, this maniac wants to kill me, and you're asking about the spirits? I suppose job, this can it? wait. I will investigate, and the culprit will be identified. But this stubborn brute Lord Craven blames me right now. As if I could do something like that. Uh, perhaps you can reason with him? Please? Ah, seems like you're ready to delve into your mind, Palace Sherry. I'm sure you'll make some good deductions. Right. Well, first, I noticed it's not on the model. Oh, it is on the model here. He's got paint around the back of his neck right there. Ah, good. Was this covered on purpose? Of course. It is very dangerous to leave a mirror exposed during a seance. The spirits may become enraged. Or someone may notice the trick they should not see. exactly what I was thinking. I can't do much about it. I wonder what this mirror could have witnessed. I can't do much about it right now. Faker. Pale skin, quickened pulse, unsteady breathing. She's barely conscious. The feebleness of women. Oh my God. Really, Sherry? Poor thing. Um, all right. Mind palace goes to the past. Okay. Lady pointed across the table. What, what is... I just noticed if I click, a thing happens. Uh, Lord Craven punched the medium when he discovered that the diamond had been stolen. Lord Craven punched the medium in the face. Deductions. Combine clues to make deductions. Okay. Uh... Lady Kern was pointing out the window. I'm sure she saw someone in the courtyard during the seance. Okay. Um. All right. Uh, Lady Kern was. Uh, I should check the area and see if there's any traces outside. Sounds good. It seems there may have been an unexpected visitor outside the window. Ah, oh, I hope it was the ghost of the Raja. Well, clearly it was. Who else could it be? Run, 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 run. How do I get out to the courtyard? Back all the way. Here, Ha ha. Ha ha. I am staff. Ah, I'm in the courtyard. Oh. Um, hello. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. I don't trust you. An adventure. I should have known. You know, I used to be an adventurer like you. Until I took a, co took a cocaine needle to the knee. Sherlock Holmes. Um, so there be the window. There be a clue. We also have a B. And a letter. Angie, it looks like the old man is losing it. He, His beehives are being ransacked and his bees are going down one by one. I don't think there's much honey left in staying with the swarm. If you catch my drift, you get the docks at noon and we'll do it together. Okay, interesting. A honey plotter's note. 
Okay. Something's stuck. Uh, don't heal through a woman's shoe. This looks recent. A shoe with a broken heel will surely leave scratches. All right, John. Do you think a ghost could leave this footprint? I'm reserving judgment. Use your keen eye to follow the trail. John is the fucking ghost. Also, what are you doing, man? Who the hell sticks their feet in the pool with their shoes and pants on? You are a psychopath. Uh, to track someone's movements, first pin the relevant evidence to the screen. Then enter concentration mode. So... Um, it's already pinned. Oh, this is the one I need to pin. Right? No, this is what needs to be pinned. And that is what was pinned. So... You to reveal a trail, except no. Oh, there it is. The shoe. Size four with a broken heel. Size four. With Most or more. All the maids in the hotel wear this exact shoe. So definitely not the ghost of a Raja. Unless. <sighs> no. What a shame. Our witness was a nosy maid. Hmm. Searching the entire hotel could be difficult. Perhaps the other maids can help us find her. So, if she did indeed abandon the broken shoe, then what we should see because there are identical shoes right there, is there should be still a second pair, a second shoe, right? So she either changed both shoes, in which case there's the broken shoe and then the one that wasn't broken, or um, she only changed the broken shoe, in which case there would still be a pair, one, one working shoe here with the broken shoe. So I'm not sure where that went, apparently, but either she's walking around with just one shoe on, uh, or we have a little bit of an inconsistency here. Ah, all right. Let's uh, talk to the maids. Oh, do I got to pin that? It's already pinned. Okay. Oh, there's a maid right there. And before I do this, let me check. You got two shoes on, I see. May I ask for your assistance? Oh, yes. I can tell you everything, sir. The staff said that Lucia got a scolding from the chief steward for wearing common shoes at work. She should be cleaning near the pictures upstairs. Okay. They assume up these stairs. I'm going to run because walking is just too much time. Near the pictures upstairs. These pictures? No, apparently not. There she is. Stop, size four shoe. Finally, there you are. One would think a maid would be easy to find in this place. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. Do you need more towels? No, no. You are the maid who saw the ghost in the seance room, yes? How did you know? Simple. You changed shoes after breaking a heel while fleeing the scene. I'm sorry, sir, but if I may ask, who are you? I'm the one asking the questions here. A precious diamond was stolen during the seance. Lord Craven entrusted me with its recovery. I'm, I'm sorry, sir, but we are forbidden to discuss the private matters of our guests. Hmm. Are you also forbidden from peeking into private rooms, Miss... Saletta. Lucia Saletta, sir. Tell me, Miss Saletta, what would your manager say if he knew you were spying on guests? I... Oh, please, sir, don't tell him. I have a family. I need this work. Oh. I won't. But 
Only if you answer my questions truthfully. And don't play coy. I can tell. What did you see in the room? Describe what happened during the seance. Uh, a lady and two gentlemen were sitting at a table, mm -hmm. touching their hands to something. The medium started to whisper and, and chant, and a ghost appeared. A ghost? You're confident? Hmm? It was unearthly, sir. It grew from the medium's chest. A glowing cloud or a bubble. I pressed closer against the window to see better. And the lady saw you? How did she? Yes. She screamed and pointed, so I hurried to escape and I broke my heel. But I did see the ghost. A sickly, evil thing. And that's all you can tell me? Did you see any of what happened next? Mm -hmm. the, the medium, Mr. Galici, he was doing something with the ghost. He grabbed at it like he was trying to catch it. And then I ran. I suppose I should be grateful you endured these horrors for such a long time. All right, I have your account memorized. Good day. Oh, you scared the poor girl, Sherry. Did she really deserve that? We all got oh, what we wanted. Up. She talked. I stay silent. Oh, let's get back to the crime scene. I always love seeing you explain simple things to simpletons. Wow, John, you're super rude. Ooh, we have a ghostly image of some kind appearing beneath the floor. Ah, we're all out of marble and ceviche. Session's about to expire. Okay. Here we go. Lady Craven retired to her room to rest. Lord Craven remained here until the staff reported that the medium was locked in his room. Okay. What the fuck is this? With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past, interact with the node to begin then recreate an accurate version of events here. Try to place the seance participants in their correct positions. Well, first, um, what's this? Uh, curious Maid's testimony. Okay, so there's nothing else here to connect. Okay, uh, I guess let's give it a try. Weird. Previous next, previous next, what? Um, no. Yeah. It all began when the lady screamed and pointed at the window. Lord Craven jumped up, ready to face anything, ghost or human. The medium shrank back in dismay. He was not expecting such a reaction and had to quickly hide the ghost. The lady was the only one left touching the diamond, at least until she fainted. Amazing! It's like you saw it with your own eyes, sir. Oh, I forgot that you were here. I guess I should discuss all of this with Lady Craven. The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. If the lady was touching a diamond, then she would have felt the ghost take it. What do you think it felt like, Sherry? A jellyfish? I think that we should probably spend some time looking at a little bit more into, you know, what the hell... All this is about. Also, that's definitely enough material to do chemical analysis. Uh, okay, do you have anything else to say? The Cravens are upstairs in room 226. It is one of our finest suites. Oh, could I have gone out this door the whole time? 
I didn't have to go all the way around. Oh my god, I'm stupid. Alright, whatever. 226. on the other side. There's two to five. There's Lady two Craven two. is not who she seems. Remember her behavior in the hall. Is this familiar oh, to you? Shit. Please, don't get angry, sir. But I know nothing about this, I swear to you. I sh okay, so I gotta, I gotta do it from over Lady here. Craven is not who she's... Okay. Um, what actions am I doing? Okay. Lady Craven is not who she seems. Remember? No. 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 Yes? No. Ah. Do we get a third bite at the apple? Lady Craven is yes. not who she Okay. No. No. Yes. No. Yes. What? We've got to fall back, Sherlock. I think they're suspicious. Oh, they were checking you out. Lady Craven is not a sh No. No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. <gasps> the gossip that the woman may not be the wife. Oh, I got an achievement. Um, by their observation, she was on the lookout during the evening. I was trying to get more hearing. They also noticed that the lady was unsure how to properly use a fish knife. I'm not sure why that last one is important information. Um, John's diary. Uh, no. Oops. Okay. Um. Okay, Mind Palace. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they don't seem related. Casebook. Uh oh. Okay. You're here at last. I didn't do that. I swear, I found her this way. Well, I did have some questions for her, but it seems I've arrived too late. Now it's a matter for the police. Mr. Holmes, you said it yourself. They're children. They'll only make things worse. You you promised me you would investigate. Investigate a theft, not a murder. Fear not. I will tell them all I've uncovered. Please, help me. The police will surely accuse me of Emma's death. You are the only one who can hmm. find the truth. I don't know. You don't really seem that distraught over this, to be honest with you. It does Fine, seem like you did it. Fine, but only because it's slightly more interesting than the walls of my room. Tell me what happened. Look, after you left, I waited in the seance room until the servants locked up Mr. Galici the medium. And was your mistress there too? Told that she returned oh, to the room. so you... you know? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Uh, regardless, the staff took Emma to her room. She was still feeling dizzy. 
So you didn't follow her. Interesting. Where did you go Where next? did you go instead? To the bar. It had been almost an hour. I see. And how long did you stay? I partook of a well-earned whiskey or two before retiring upstairs. Ask anyone there. I plan to. Is Mr. Galici still being held? And where did the servants secure him? He's in room 225. But that pigeon-livered man at the reception desk refused to give me the key. Well, well I will have to visit good. reception myself then. Perhaps he will listen to reason. Now we arrive at the tragedy at hand. So what transpired after your detour to the bar? I headed up to my room to find Emma on the bed. I didn't pay her much attention at first. I was still preoccupied with that damned medium. But when I realized she was silent, I drew closer and discovered she was dead. What's more, the diamond lay right there beside her. Oh, well, that is splendid news. Splendid? The return of the diamond will be cold comfort if I live out my days in a jail cell. You must help me. Let me see what I can find. Many an hour has passed, and you already have yourself a murder mystery, Sherlock. Why am I not surprised? Okay. Um, it's probably better to start over here. Yeah. You promised me compensation for your gross misconduct in order to cover the cost of my treatment and quell the scandal. I have not received a penny. No, I lost my job. All sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, however, the ring is... okay. Someone was not happy with his post? Someone was not happy with his post? Someone was not happy with his post? Reconstruct it. Okay. Should probably check the doorknob. Prince, of course, everyone's already been through here. <sighs> Candelabra on the floor. It's odd. Thard Rouge, Calamel Mascara, a real altar of beauty for the traveling temptress. The hidden compartment. Aha! Uh -huh. A neat hiding place. Why would she conceal all of this? A moth ring. I still don't think that's a moth. Hmm. This ring looks out of place among the others, and the design is familiar. A wedding band. Um. Odd actor. Sepet. Virtus. Mm hmm. I know Virtus is virtue. Um, what actor? What actor is a an adverb? Boldly, audaciously, fearlessly, rashly. Sabbat, Arrival. Uh, no. No, uh, Wise. So... Wise. 
wisdom is boldly virtuous or a, a virtue wisdom is a virtue of the bold when I search the 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 full string I don't see virtus dactor sapit Um, yep, the only things that are coming up on the search look like potential spoilers on Steam, so, <clears throat> which I'm not going to look up. Um, list of Latin phrases is not on the list there. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to go with, with, uh, um, wisdom is a virtue of the bold, I guess. A letter. Several thousand pounds. That's quite a fortune. Okay. It's an interesting design here on the box as well. Make a perfume. Perfume that I saw on that guy's table. Oh, apparently I'm not done. I have to actually. What? Oh, there Virtus we go. Virtus or Dr. Courage tastes bold. A okay. unique family motto. Courage. The mystery tastes deepens. Bold. A victim with a checkered past and poor taste. Um. That's nothing like the things that I was able to find, but all right. Uh, yes, I see you on the door first. Let's come about here. There we go. This must be the missing diamond. A tremendous specimen... Now forever tainted. I don't know why I had to look at it at a very specific angle. Um, obviously she was strangled. Strangled with bare hands, judging by the bruises. I disagree. Um, oh, I, no, I suppose I do see fingers on the, on the one side of the neck. This very strange presentation, but sure. Um, oh, AD move, okay. Uh, pillow. She has... Everything was tipped out of the bed as if it was searched. Do you think she stole the stone? It's certainly possible, but we won't get her confession now. Well, there is a professional medium right next door. Yeah, yeah. So young and lock. so dead. Another mystery to investigate, my friend. So young and so dead. I didn't, okay. Another mystery to investigate, my friend. It's on the other side of this door. I already did this. Um, so this is 226. 225 was on the other side of the hotel, but there's too much space for it to be a conjoined room. I, I still think I should be able to look at this down here. And yet I can't. Can I look for prints? No. Okay. Candle burning under the plant. So yeah, uh, that uh, door goes to some room right, right about here. Here's 225. Okay. Oh, I need to talk to the... I need to corroborate his alibi and I need to get a key. Oh. Um, pile of money. 
cheap ring. Uh, stolen ring. Uh, pin that. And, oops. You bomb me on. Sorry. Maybe a guest noticed it. Okay. How about you there, tall hat? Could you help me? That's a question I can answer. Found a way to survive the long and spent only a short time in the bar before he left the seance room. Or after he left the seance room. Okay. Help me, please. I usually have an answer for everything, but not for this. Okay. How about you, other big hat guy? Excuse me, just one question. I can't help you with that, sir. Right. You obviously haven't thought this all through. Or I am annoying them on purpose, John. You are... Alright, um... I mean, let's leave that for now. Oh, okay. I, okay, I can change it later. Okay. Um, okay. Those two things are connected. Okay. I mean, honestly, Lord Craven's not looking too good, but that diamond didn't look like it was in a position where it was had tumbled out of the bag. It didn't look like it was ransacked to me, so. Okay. Can I just randomly try these? Huh. I mean, yeah. You're just annoying these people on purpose. Shut up, John. Hello there, friendo. Um... Made probable thief. Uh, I'm not sure which one I need to pin. Um. Okay. Can do that here too. Yeah. Okay. I think this is. Give me the key to Luca Galici's room. I need to talk to him about the events of the seance. I suppose you are an impartial outsider. All right, but please do not give it to Lord Craven. We do not want to see our reputation damaged further. Awkward. Mm. They still don't know what a nasty surprise awaits upstairs. Hush. No need to cause another ruckus. The last thing we want is the police to come meddling. Okay. I guess I have the key now. Ah, well, hello. John, Jesus Christ. 
Christ, man, you're a fucking witch. I see you enjoyed the hmm. Marlin Ceviche. Someone is making the most of his stay. Can you blame the man? I'd say he's not ordering enough. Tools and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. Now, there was a knife... Or, or weapons and defenses against visitors from the great beyond. Right, so in the cut scene when we first encountered the body, we did see that there was a knife there. A short-handled, short-bladed, about three or four inches long, wood-handled knife. Tools and accessories for masterful prestidigitation. A familiar substance. It's the ectoplasm that stained the seance table, but this time there's enough for analysis. It's literally less than there was in the room. Uh, open your casebook, highlight the evidence, mark the flask icon, and then E. Okay. Casebook. Flask. E. Okay, what am I supposed to do? Three, two. Yeah, what am I supposed to do? Create the target formula on the right, so 3, 2. Drag out two reagents. Uh, right click, drag an operation. Link the reagents to an operation. Combine so the result matches the target formula. Reaction shows it is rubber latex mixed with phosphorus. As much as this chemical element is dangerous to hold in the mouth, I am quite disappointed and expected to find something trickier. My faith in this medium has burst, just like a rubber balloon. Ah, so the door is supposed to go to the other room. They are supposed to be conjoined. Do you always travel with your books, Mr. Galici? I do. In my line of work, one needs resources available to help deal with the unpredictable and unworldly. Okay. I'm afraid I can wait no longer to hear your account of the seance, Mr. Galici. So please, tell me what you saw. Lady Craven wanted to meet the spirit of the Raja. My conjuration was successful perhaps even too successful. I am sure this spirit was the only one who could have taken the diamond. Lord Craven needs to leave me alone. Do you think the police will believe you? Of course. I didn't take anything. And spiritual phenomena are beyond their control. Or should I summon the ghost again so they may attempt to handcuff it? I think I would prefer to begin my investigation in the physical realm. Observe. <laughs> yep, there's the white paint I noticed before. Okay, um, all right, lean, peels, appears malnourished, nose bleeding from a heavy punch. He uses makeup to hide the traces of his illness from malnourishment. That doesn't seem right. His hands and thin fingers are used to manipulate concealed items. He has fresh scratches and scrapes on his wrists from a recent and short fight. I think he tries his best as a medium, but his business doesn't go well, and he sometimes goes without food. 
<sighs> Lady Vernon's hands and turn, okay. Um, the makeup doesn't make sense as far as hiding the signs of malnourishment, but it also doesn't seem to make much sense as far as hiding tattoos because it's on the back of his neck and there's some in his ear here. It looks more like he does something other than being a medium. Um... Hmm. Oh, and hold on a sec. My my session. I, I got logged out over here. Just a sec. All right. Uh, where was I? All right. So the nose. We saw Craven punch him in the face. Glasses aren't broken, but he's bleeding from the nose. We didn't see anything that would cause the scratches on his wrist. Um, obviously he's going to be good at sleight of hand as a medium, you know, he's basically doing magic tricks, close-up magic. What's tripping me up, however, is the makeup. It doesn't really make sense for either of these explanations, because there's makeup on the back of his neck, and there's makeup in his ear. Um, it's almost as if he does something other than being a medium, like he's wearing makeup, like he's a clown or something. But it makes less sense for the makeup to cover signs of malnourishment than tattoos. But if you're going to cover a tattoo, wouldn't you use a color of makeup that blends in with your skin? And this is white makeup. It sticks out quite a bit. I noticed it during the cutscene. Um, but I mean, at the same time, you wouldn't use white makeup to cover up signs of malnourishment. Either way, he's malnourished. They're telling us that in both cases. Either way, he got his wounds from a fight. The only difference is with the makeup and what and why his hands are thin. This is a new way of earning money by deceiving the wealthy. Well, I don't think that he... Okay, here, here's, here's my deciding factor. Because the makeup is just a strange clue. Uh, I'm going to make this decision based on just the last line. I think he tries his best as a medium, but his business doesn't go well, and he sometimes has to go without food. We know that he knows he's full of shit. Right. He knows that he's not really a medium. He knows that he's doing tricks, magic tricks, basically, in order to fool rich people. I don't think that he actually believes that he speaks with the dead, which I think would be the central qualification for he tries his best as a medium. This one says, I believe he's more criminal than a medium, and his this new, and his this new way of earning money by deceiving the wealthy. He knows he's deceiving them. There's the ropes and the knives and the... the ectoplasm that we just analyzed so I think just based on that alone he must be a former thief I have shocking news that changes your situation entirely oh no wait what am I thinking the spirits will have told you this already I, I'm not in the necessary state for summoning Spirits prefer clarity of mind and soul. Please, tell me. Lady Craven died in the very next room while you were in here. Did you not hear anything? What? How? Oh, in fact, I did hear noises. That Craven is a very loud man. But I never thought he would do that to his wife. Well, you claim to be a medium. Perhaps you could ask her spirit why. What? No, it's uh, too dangerous. Oh, well. At least I can make the dead talk. Um, 
okay. Um, tell me about your scratches. Those scratches on your hands look rather painful. What happened to you? It was those savage servants. They were so rough bringing me here as if I was trying to escape. When I'm free, I'll demand compensation. I think the idea is that he obtained the scratches from her in the process of killing her. Which, the placement of the scratches does make sense for that. Okay. Do I pick like, any of them? I guess we could do that. Sorry, that's beyond my expertise. Do you realize just how dangerous it is to hold phosphorus in the mouth? I beg your pardon? I'll bet it makes your rubber balloons glow impressively in the dark, but you'll regret it when the hypertension and vomiting sets in. You mock my talent, sir. You shouldn't be so flippant about things beyond your earthly understanding. How ignorant one must be to compare a spirit's ectoplasm with balloons. It was merely a word of caution. We both know how match factory workers look after several years on the job. Okay, um... Him about the ring. That's a remarkable pin of yours, Mr. Galici. Does it have any meaning? The butterfly? It's a yes. reminder of a time in which I was truly happy. What a coincidence. Lady Craven had a ring with the same design. A coincidence indeed. <laughs> I suspect it is a common theme in jewelry. Okay. I'm Guessing that that was correct, then? Um, we the diamond. That's the one I'm leaning towards. Okay. This is all just a big misunderstanding. The spirits confirm it. Supposed to do now. I suppose I can probably talk to him about that, huh? I found these jewels secreted away. Are you familiar with them? Ah! Oh, it cannot be so! That deceptive wagtail. How could she do this? That sounds like a yes. These items were supposedly stolen from us during our trip. I must have spent hours reporting it all to the police. And it turns out she had them all along. The trollop. I'd kill her myself were she not dead already. Okay. Do you recognize this ring? Should I? 
It's a third-rate piece if ever I've seen one. I'd never buy something like this. Did you ever see Miss Emma wearing it? No. And why should she? I gave her enough jewelry that she could wear a superior ring every day of the week. Okay. Uh, yep. Emma tried to frame Luca, the medium, for her theft of the diamond. In revenge, she killed her. Let's see. Bring uh, Luca Gucci to justice. Luca is a murderer. He couldn't stop himself from killing him, although he could have just told the police everything. Help him escape. Luca fought for his life. Yeah, he didn't fight for his life. He fucking murdered her. Pretty sure that's what happened here. Is that correct, or... Is that wrong? Is that right? Do something about it, Holmes. I... I did not do it. You know that. Do I... What do I do now? <laughs> it says Mind Palace. Switch conclusion. No. I'm pretty sure this is it. What the hell? Oh, okay. Luca Galici, I know you murdered Lady Craven, and I can prove it. That would be a grand story for the newspapers. But where's your proof? I was locked in here and could not hurt a fly. Okay, uh, I think you picked the lock. Yes, yes, the locked room. Good of you to mention it. I inspected the door between the rooms, and the lock on it is piteous. You could open it with a penknife. So I am now a burglar, as well as a thief and a murderer? Burglar is a thief. You as for the I'm motive, thief? it's obvious that you deduced that Lady Craven was the real thief. Of course, it helped that this was not your first encounter with Miss Emma. Uh, I am... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. How on earth can you believe this? I think the police will easily find the proof when they browse their archives. And the scratches. Your wrists are bloodied, and there's no way a servant's manhandling could cause such an injury. It was Lady Craven as you strangled her. You are... You are fantasizing, Mr. Holmes. Confess, Luca. It is done, Luca. You will be arrested. Your best strategy now is to confess and hope your reasons were justified. I... Uh, I... Ha. I don't know how you figured it out. But yes. I killed her. I had to. This woman could not get away with ruining my life twice. Twice? Mm. I knew Emma before she was a lady. I mean, she pretended to be noble back then too. But only so our gang, the Moths, could steal from those snobs. She betrayed us. Stole all our money and disappeared. Leaving us to rot in jail. I was young. I spent three years in that hell. And tonight, she tried to set you up again. Did she recognize you? She didn't. I came to her afterwards, pleading that she drop this farce, but she laughed in my face. I just remembered my time in the clink. All I suffered while she indulged. And I grabbed her throat. Uh, yeah. Murder is murder, Luca. You could have told Lord Craven the truth and seen Miss Emma's downfall, but you could not restrain yourself. He would never believe me. We will never know. 
Still, perhaps a jury will be more easily swayed. Oh my god, if the not, desk is blinking You'll in the get background. to see your friends in jail again soon. He's probably right. Lord Craven probably wouldn't have believed him, but... We'll meet again, Holmes. I will get you. In this life or the next. Get your hands off me. He murdered the woman who put him in jail. Should we be worried? Fear not, John. Unlike Miss Emma, I will see him coming. Honestly, Miss Emma was pretty stupid for not protecting herself. That was too much fun, Sherry. I'm buzzing. Buzzing. I'm, I don't mean physically. Wasn't it I mean, fun? A woman died, John. I was too slow to the truth, too hesitant to intervene. It was not a good opportunity to steal that thing. Oh, lighten up. She had all the time Most in the world to find a better plan. Choices. If you swan about with a diamond in your pocket, that's what happens. Wealth is a weakness. So we must blame those who covet it. With enough money on the line, Sherlock, a man will do just about anything, even murder, and then we get to solve it. I suspect you perhaps cannot grasp the true horrors of mortality, John. Oi, I am aware of my perilous existence, thank you very much. Hmm. I must admit, even if the outcome of the adventure was imperfect, there was some pleasure to be had in the puzzle. Well, Cordona seems more depraved and decadent than we thought. I bet you'll get another chance. A bet, you say? Ah, uh, a figure of speech. Just a figure of speech. Ah, <sighs> damn. Well, take one last look at the view, then we must be off. It's time to do what we came here for. <clears throat> okay. That's the first mission then. And uh, we have, yeah, other things we have to do, so. Um, I say we do them next time. That'll be it for today. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.